Keeping the Gospel Central in Counseling on this edition of Truth and Love. I'm Dale Johnson, and you're listening to Truth and Love, a podcast of the Association of Certified Biblical Counselors, where we seek to provide biblical solutions to the problems that people face. This week on the podcast, I have with me Pastor Keith Christensen. Keith is the preaching pastor of Christ Fellowship Bible Church. It's a recent church plant in the Fort Worth, Texas area. He's a certified ACBC counselor. He's been involved in in training biblical counselors since 2016. He helps one of our great training centers down in the Fort Worth, Texas area, Center for Biblical Counseling and Discipleship. Keith and his wife live there in Fort Worth and have five children. Brother, I'm so grateful that you are here with us, reminding us of the beauty of the gospel in counseling. I, I Let me just say a couple of things really quick that I think are important to address here. I think it's obvious we do see a drift, a tendency in, in counseling, even in churches among believers, to drift towards something where we think it improves upon the gospel, or it improves upon the scriptures, or it adds to depth and degree of the effectiveness of Scripture. I'm grateful that that you're wanting to bring us back to the centerpiece of the gospel, that we never grow over it, we never mm-hmm. improve upon it, and that it always has to be a centerpiece in the work that we do in the counseling room. It is mm-hmm. by nature now who we are as Bible believers who trust in the Lord Jesus and His work alone. That's who we are. So I want to start mm-hmm. here Make make a case for us in, in in this you know in this situation. Make a case for us about biblical counselors needing to keep the gospel central throughout the counseling process. Because we might even start well, and then we sort of drift away from the gospel. Make this case for us. Yes, and I, I appreciate it. You picked up maybe on that what you said there last that we might start well. My my main burden in starting to teach about this is to, to push gently back against the notion that as biblical counselors, we need to share the gospel with people in the first or second session, clarify people's relationship to the gospel as best we can, make sure they've trusted upon the gospel, because we know we can't we can't disciple someone who isn't a disciple. We can't help someone follow Christ who hasn't trusted in Christ. Apart from Jesus, you can do nothing, but abiding in him, you can bear much fruit. We, we know they need to be Christians. But then I think sometimes we think, okay, great, gospel check. And then we leave it in session one or two and don't take it with us to the other counseling sessions. That's why I appreciate how you worded this question to keep the gospel central throughout mm-hmm. the counseling process. And this is a, this is a podcast of ACBC. I like to use the standards of conduct of ACBC to impress this necessity of of making the gospel central throughout the counseling process, especially for people who are already inclined to believe that ACBC has a good thing going like, like I do. So the standards of conduct of ACBC say, biblical counselors must be committed to the truth that the fundamental key to the process of biblical counseling, not just the beginning, but the fundamental key to the process of biblical counseling is the person and work of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. So the fundamental key to biblical counseling is not heart idolatry or the principles of put off, put on, or, you know, the four G's of peacemaking or the four rules of communication or the four promises of forgiveness or anything else other than the person and work of Jesus. Now, all of those other truths are helpful and even necessary to the task of biblical counseling. We Some people overcorrect and, and go gospel-centered in a way that you kick out everything that isn't the gospel. We don't want to do that. Don't kick out those other truths, put off, put on, hard idolatry, etc. But we need to show how those, those things only work in the context of an ongoing faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to show how those scriptural principles of sanctification depend on the grace that's available in Christ and our ongoing faith in God for, for that grace. So that that's um, especially for mm-hmm. ACBC listeners, that 
that is how I would want to develop a little ethos and make the case for the need to do this. Yeah, I, I think this needs to be a constant clarion call for us. One of the things C.S. Lewis said, and I'll paraphrase, is, is that what makes a great moral teacher is not that he's giving us new morality. It's he's reminding us of the old. And I think in this case, when we talk about the, cent- the, the, the centerpiece of the gospel for our counseling, we have to constantly revisit this, remind ourselves over and over again, and and then practically live this out in the counseling room so that we make sure that that our counselees are their hope resides in Christ for help not in our abilities yes. not in our wisdom and, and so on and so forth now i want you to to slow this down a little bit and give us a few ideas about how we might connect the gospel because we talk about that man this is a great idea confessionally and yes we hold to this and we cheer about this idea and we all want to be this but then it comes nitty gritty time about how we connect the gospel in the counseling room in an ongoing way. Help us to understand how we do that. Well, practically, I think the way to do that is to minister the Bible in context, especially right the New Testament. All all of the moral and ethical instruction of the New Testament is grounded in the the person and work of Christ. We, we think about the letters of Paul. The, the first part of it is most often just focused on what God has done for us in Christ. And then there's some great therefore, as in Romans 12 or Ephesians 4 or Colossians 3, 5. And then it says, therefore, on the basis of what Christ has done, do these things. And, and we should keep that. We should try and minister, not rush over the over the gospel to these ethical instructions of how people need to grow and change in specific ways without grounding them in the work of Christ. And and then often uh, what what New Testament authors will do is even within those passages of ethical instruction they will they will drop little little gospel grounds of of the exhortation they just gave. So one practical thing to do is to when you when you minister the scriptures Let's say you want to minister, you know, put off, put on from Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Well, Ephesians 4, 22 is not, does not begin a new sentence. I mean, just, just take a little bit of the wider context. And what does it say right before that? But if, if you allow me time, let me turn there. My Bible. Before it says, put off your old self, it says, that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, Mm -hmm. etc. So to ground this put off, put on has to be in the context of I am following Jesus. Mm -hmm. The truth is in him. Or or if you're teaching the fruit of the spirit, you know, Galatians 5, walk in the spirit. What, What is the fruit of the spirit? Galatians 5, 22, 23. Well, go ahead and take the next verse. Galatians 5.24 says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So how is it that we actually can, can walk in the spirit and, and not fulfill the desires of the flesh? Well, it's only if you've been crucified with Christ. Mm. You, are, you are trusting in him. Or, or 2 Corinthians 5.9, therefore, we make it our ambition, whether at home or away, to please God. That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, where on earth do those desires come from? Well, okay, nowhere on earth. But but take the wider passage. Why don't you go down a few verses to and and when you teach that truth, that principle that there are only two options on the shelf, right? Pleasing pleasing Christ or pleasing self. We'll add to that jingle a few verses later, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 says, the love of Christ controls us or compels us. And 15 says, he died for all so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised. How how can I actually develop new desires of wanting to please God? Well, it's because Jesus died and was raised for me. And one of one of the results of that is that I do not live for myself anymore, but for him who died for me. So so that that that's one way. There, there are some you know charts. You could revisit with people the three trees, mm-hmm. 
I, I have one I use called the gospel box. You can, you can Google those. And when you assign scripture passages to people for homework, you can ask them as one of the study questions, how does this passage reveal or point to the gospel? And in doing that, you're also helping to clarify their understanding of the gospel in an ongoing way throughout the counseling. I want to reemphasize one of the primary things that you said is we don't leave the ethical calls, the ethical no. actions of Scripture, right? But what you're saying is all of those ethical actions are to be rooted in and motivated by a renewed mind, always connected to, to our heart and our belief and our desires being driven and controlled by the work of Christ and the ways yes. of Christ. And we have to see those connections woven together. And that's the beauty of, of how we see change happen. And I love this because this places the onus on the Holy Spirit to do this work. We're using yes. his sword to accomplish this work in a person's life because we're rooting them, even their actions, into gospel saturation in the work of Christ. So I, I love the way that you're describing this. Now, bring us a little bit further. Give us some practical suggestions for how counselors who you know are listening to the podcast can grow in this particular area. All of us could stand to grow in this area deeper and deeper as we counsel others. Yeah, just, just as a way to become more skilled, more equipped at at not like you said, not giving the gospel instead of sharp, clear, direct moral instruction. I mean, the scripture is for training in righteousness, mm -hmm. but but to actually ground that in in the grace of Christ, wherein those instructions are actually possible, possible with the heart motive that pleases God at that too. So one way to grow in this is to learn from other skilled counselors. And here's the way I would encourage you to do that is read counseling books and try and try and have an eye out for how are they grounding the counsel they're giving in the gospel. I love Heath Lambert's finally free for this. So I would encourage you to, to maybe read if not all of Heath Lambert's finally free talking about a biblical counseling for the issue of pornography, mm -hmm. at least read his introduction chapter one, where he talks about how he's going to ground all of the counsel he's going to give in the grace that's available in Christ. But then also read the conclusion and application questions of each chapter. And there he'll show you how whatever he's talked about, radical amputation, growing in gratitude, whatever. He, he grounds it at the end of the chapter in the gospel. I think that would be very instructive. Mm. Or, or look out for that when you're reading Ken Sandy's The Peacemaker. Mm. See how each new counseling principle he talks about, he ties it back into the gospel, whether as the motivation or the example or forgiveness for not doing it or the message in which you actually have power to do these things is instructing. A, a smaller work, you could do this. I'm encouraging you be discipled by really good counselors through their books. Jim Neuheiser has, has a couple of booklets that are great on this. One is very small called I want help. I want to change. Mm -hmm. And this is all about how, how the gospel needs to be central throughout the counseling process. And then you can see how he applies that methodologically to the issue of anger in a little booklet help my anger's out of control or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, so that that's something I, I want to encourage you to to have an eye out for when you read good biblical counseling books, and it will help you to grow in your own understanding of how you can apply the gospel to very specific counseling issues in an ongoing kind of way. One other thing, and, and this is coming from Heath Lambert's, whether it's finally free, I don't remember if it's chapter one or the introduction, but encourage your counselee, whatever the issue is, to walk in ongoing repentance toward God mm. and a kind of repentance that is lashed tightly together with faith in the gospel. That's, that's biblical repentance. Mm. So if I'm dealing with anger toward my family, all right, just have your counselee throughout counseling. Say, we're going to do this. Whenever you get angry, I'm requiring you, you need to go to God, confess your sin of anger to him, Try and do that with godly sorrow. Ask for his forgiveness for this. And then either 
after you do that, thank him for the, the forgiveness that he offers in Christ and, and believe upon a promise in scripture for that, or ask specifically for forgiveness on the basis of some promise for forgiveness in Christ. And then after you ask for forgiveness, ask God for power to change. And either ask God for power to change on the basis of a promise of scripture that you have power to change mm. because of what Jesus did. Or after you ask for power to change, then, then, you know, quote one of those gospel passages, R- Romans 6, 11, Titus 2, 11 through 14. One of these gospel promises that in Christ, because of his work, we have power to change and, and thank God for this. So, so that's a way to just, Hey, whenever we're, mm. whenever you struggle with this, we're going to talk to God about it. We're going to ask for forgiveness. We're going to ask for power to change. And we are going to depend on the work of Jesus Christ for both. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an easy, excellent way to just keep the gospel with you throughout the counseling process. Yeah, this is great. Counselors ask me all the time, how do I measure my growth in counseling? Keith, what you've done today is you've helped us to have a backdrop, a measuring stick of how how we evaluate ourselves. So for those of you who are early on in the counseling process, or maybe you've been doing this for a long time, this is always helpful to revisit after you finish in the counseling room to, to sit, meditate, think about what just unfolded and evaluate yourself. How did you, in your counseling, how did you maintain gospel centeredness, even in the things that you're calling them to do? Are you rooting that in the work of Christ and beliefs and promises that the Lord has given us in the way in which we correct ourselves? Are we measuring ourselves against Christ's call and Christ's commands um, in the ways that we sin or how we repent, those sorts of things? This is a beautiful measuring stick for how we evaluate our growth as a counselor or our health as a biblical counselor. Keith has been very helpful, and I'm so grateful for the reminder, brother. Thank you for helping to focus our attention here on maintaining gospel centeredness throughout the counseling process. listening to Truth and Love, a podcast of ACBC. Now, if you're interested in this topic that Keith and I have been talking about, keeping the gospel central in your counseling, we've just completed an entire annual conference back in October in his image. And I want to tell you now that all the conference recordings are available on our website. So if you want to buy the whole conference collection, if you want to buy individual plenaries or breakouts, all of that is now available And in that, we encourage you, keep the gospel focus in your counseling sessions as we think biblically about humanity and who humanity is. And then we see the beauty of the gospel necessary in counseling. So I want to encourage you, go check out our website, our store, where you will see all of our conference recordings now available from our 2022 annual conference in His Image. Check that out at biblicalcounseling.com.